Hey, good day, it's Prezzo here and welcome back to my shop. I built this spot welder about 18 months ago and it's been very successful. I've done a couple of hundred welds with it in different types of material. It's got a good strong clamping system, it has a digital timer and it uses the standard microwave oven transformer that's been modified in the same way that you would see on literally dozens of different YouTube videos. Uh, if you do any of your own research on this and you have a look at what other people are doing, you will see that everybody cuts off the secondary or removes the secondary from a, a microwave oven transformer and then rewinds its secondary with two turns of a heavy gauge copper wire. So using that as my uh, baseline, I decided I would do the same thing. And it's been successful. Like I say, I've been able to get pretty good welds from this machine. Now a, a YouTube user uh, got in touch with the, via the comments and suggested that the method I was using to modify the transformer wasn't the most efficient way of doing things. And here I should give a shout out to Matt. Uh, his channel is called Matt's Awesome Stuff. He's got some really excellent videos showing you not just how to modify a microwave oven transformer but about transformer theory in general. So he's got a, a whole series of videos which are very, very well put together and I think it's, uh, it's worth having a look. However, uh, what Matt said was that the technique for rewinding the secondary has been copied incorrectly uh, by lots and lots of users. And he suggested that putting two full turns of wire through the secondary was actually reducing the performance of the transformer. And that essentially all you need to do is put a, a loop through the laminations of the transformer. So it's basically like a horseshoe arrangement. So being the curious type, I thought, well, this is worth looking into. It uh, looked like a modification that was reasonably straightforward, so I thought I'd have a go at it. So this video is more or less about uh, what I can find out for, by doing this process. And I, I wanted to be able to measure the performance of this. I decided I would measure the current before and after uh, just to see if I can get any increase in performance. So uh, let's shine a light on this topic and see what we can find out. Now the wire that I'm using here is a number two BNS battery cable wire. It um, neatly fills the space left by the old secondary and it seems logical that you put two turns in there to uh, give you at least one complete coil plus two halves coming out which are then connected to the electrode arms on the welder. The idea of course here is to maximize the current that you get through the secondary the voltage is really irrelevant. Now I haven't tested this but all of the examples that I saw worked out with about one and a half volts coming out of the secondary and some people reported getting averages of up to a thousand amps. I'm hoping to modify this so that we can at least get a slightly better uh, amount of amperage coming out of these two cables. Uh, I based this design on a commercially made spot welder called an Aston Portable Spot Welder and it was one that I had used and done some maintenance on. And I went back to that welder and checked out how the transformer on that one was arranged. So, Let's take a quick look at that welder and check out the transformer in it. This brown wire you can see here is actually the active coming directly from the 240 volt mains into the primary. The primary coil is actually the full length of the transformer laminations. This loop around the outside is a single strap of fairly thick copper, fairly wide as well, heavily insulated, and it's wrapped around the primary. At the front of the welder you can see these braided copper strips, flexible strips, which you use to connect the secondary to the upper arm. And the locking mechanism you can see here is basically what I copied for my own welder. Now I just uh, whipped up this little 3D model to give you an idea of how the transformer works in the spot welder that I was replicating. This section in the center here is the primary coil and it's wrapped around the laminations of the transformer. 
in much the same way as you would find in a microwave oven transformer. The only difference being that this laminated set has been turned on its side. Now the interesting thing is that the secondary is wrapped around the primary. Uh, basically, if you look at this end, you'll see that the coils are arranged with their curves being concentric. Now, a traditional microwave oven transformer is a little bit different. We'll have a look at that in a moment. But essentially, this secondary is either a single strip or maybe several strips of solid copper flat which have been bent around and then simply insulated so they don't make contact with the primary. So this is the more familiar microwave oven transformer and this is how it's going to look after I've fitted the new secondary. So the primary coil in the microwave oven transformer takes up position at the bottom of the laminations and on top of that you would normally, in fact if you follow the instructions that you might find on YouTube, you would put two coils of heavy gauge wire through that space at the top above the primary. All I'm going to do is bend a sort of a horseshoe shape out of copper strips. They'll be fitted in and insulated and also packed because there's quite a lot of space either side of this strip and uh, the secondary has a tendency to rattle backwards and forwards uh, when it's in operation. So just to avoid any issues with um, vibration damaging the insulation on the primary, I'm going to pack that space with either insulating wood or plastic fibre or something. So that's the plan. Uh, let's see what happens. Okay, well I'm thinking that before I do any modification of this setup that I have at the moment, and I must say this has been quite successful um, as a spot welder. I've done quite a few jobs with it and it basically does what I need to do. Here you can see the primary winding on the bottom of the microwave oven transformer and here on top you can see I've got my two turns of number two BNS copper wire which is forming my secondary. Now just so I get some sort of a baseline on this, I'm going to measure the current uh, that I'm getting from this system at the moment. Now, I purchased this uh, specifically for this job and it's a pretty cheap looking uh, clamp meter. The thing that was attractive about this though was that it had a range up to a thousand amps. Now, not sure how accurate this is or how long it's going to last. But uh, most of the other clamp meters I've seen that you can purchase online don't go anywhere near that. Having said that, I'm not going to rely on measuring the current at the secondary end of the transformer. I'm going to measure the current on the way in, so basically at the 240 volt supply line. This is you know, just a way of getting an idea of whether I've actually done anything to increase the current. So this is the, the main supply line coming in. Uh, this is actually on its way to the main power switch. So I'm going to put the clamp meter on there. Okay, so we're going to leave that there. Hopefully we can see it. And I'm going to measure this on the 200 amp range. So let's just get some power happening here. Let's just try doing a weld. I've got some stainless steel sheet in the electrodes about 0.6 of a millimeter thick and I've dressed the electrodes and made sure they're adjusted correctly. So let's do a weld, keep an eye on the amperage. Okay, 5.8 amps. Let's just do another one just to be sure. So I just broke that weld, put it back in the electrodes. So let's try again. Right, 5.7, let's call it 5.75. So I'm going to put that in my notebook and then after we've done the modification we'll check it again. Okay, so I've just extracted the transformer from the welder and as you can see this is pretty much what everyone else on YouTube was doing. So I've got the battery cable going around the center of the laminations, one full turn and then two half turns. So Let's just get this out of here. This might be a bit of a struggle. Well, I had to do a bit of surgery off camera there. The 
insulation on this cable has actually welded itself to the, the loop below. And I just had to jam a screwdriver in there to separate them. So that's uh, something I didn't expect. There's obviously a lot more heat being generated on these coils than I was led to believe. Okay, well having got that wire out of the transformer now and having a close look at it, I can see that the insulation has started to melt and deform. So this insulation is PVC, it's quite flat where it was in touch with the, the coil below it or above it and there's a bit of blistering happening on that surface there as well. So clearly this, uh, the heat generated from this coil has started to break down that insulation. Now that was unexpected. I didn't really think that that was going to be an issue. Uh, there's also a little bit of a certain amount of vibration that happens when this coil is activated. So that in conjunction with the softened state of the PVC could be a problem. Now that's unexpected. Um, I didn't imagine that was going to happen. Uh, for anybody who's thinking about doing this and using this type of wire, uh, it might be a good idea to try and pack this in quite tightly and either zip tie it together or uh, pack it really, really well so that vibration isn't a problem. You may also need to consider getting more air passing through your housing where you're keeping your transformer, trying to keep that cool. So, um, I'm going to keep this. This is going to become the flexible connection uh, between the new uh, secondary and the, the moving arm, the upper arm of my spot welder. And remember that this is really sort of underrated. It's, uh, it's thinner than I would like it to be, but it needs to be flexible. The copper strip that I'm using, uh, I've done some calculations on that, and I've got the, the figures here. The existing copper that I've got is number two BNS. That's brown and sharp. It's got an area of 32.15 millimeters squared. The copper strip, just one of them, is 24 millimeters wide, 0.7 of a millimeter thick. It has a cross-sectional area of 16.8 millimeters squared. Now two of these will actually exceed the, the area of this cable, just two of those copper strips. Now I'm hoping to double the current, so I'm going to double the area and then add one. So I'm actually going to use five of these copper strips. Now five of them is still quite thin. That's five there. And that's going to be quite easy to, to bend and drill and, and work with and so on. It's still going to have to be insulated and uh, having seen what's happened to this one, I'm going to have to be very careful about how I do to insulate that. I also realise now that this cable, which I was hoping to use to make the flexible connection, is really the bottleneck. It's going to uh, restrict the amount of current that this thing can really carry. So I may end up having to double up on this or I may have to use uh, like a braided copper strap uh, if I can get one. But um, either way, I've got to be a little bit careful I'm not throttling the performance of this secondary by using something too light to make the connection. I'm also hoping that I can use this copper strip joined directly to the fixed arm on the welder. Uh, that way I don't have to worry about another cable at the bottom end. So let's go ahead. We're going to get this clamped and drilled and bent and then we'll have a look at fitting it to the transformer itself. I just uh, drilled and deburred all of those so they would stack nice and flat together. And I'm going to hold this together with an 8mm bolt and nut. And uh, eventually the flexible cable is going to be bolted to this same fastener at this end. So that's just going to hold the whole stack of copper strips together while I carry out the, the bending process. So. This might look like a bit of a lash up, but um, I'm just going to use a, a large socket to bend this around, just using this mandrel. And I'll 
just going to use some of this square tube just as a stop. Now I've got plenty of length on this, so actually I should think about this, shouldn't I? I've got to consider how far that's going to bend through. So I probably want more than that. So just in case you're wondering what I'm doing, I'm just using the transformer here as a guide looking to see how much of this stock I'm going to have protruding from the front of the transformer body. So I'm thinking that's going to be enough. I'll come back a bit. Alright, so I'm thinking that'll do. So I think it's just a matter of gently coaxing this around. Alright, so that's roughly what I want. So let's try this in the transformer body and see how it looks. Now the idea is going to be that that is going to push through the transformer body. These are my primary connectors here. So the curved end of the horseshoe is going to go at that same end. And protruding from the what will be the front of the transformer now, we've got a an end which we can connect up to our flexible connector. This free end here is going to have to be joined to the, the fixed electrode arm and I want that to be fixed just with um, these same copper strips. So I'm going to have to figure out a way of joining on some sort of a, a bracket or something which will fix down here. And the other thing that we've got to be careful of is that uh, this whole bundle of strips is going to flap around inside the transformer body and we don't want that. Um, when this is in operation, just the, the magnetic forces make this coil rattle around at 50 cycles a second if you're in Australia or 60 if you're overseas. So in order to stop that I'm going to use this material, this is called multi-panel, it's an engineering foam. It's inert, it's uh, fire resistant, uh, it's very light and easy to cut and I can size that so that it will isolate those copper strips in the transformer body. So I'm going to pack them outside, inside, on the bottom, on the top and I will also insulate all of these copper strips and I'm thinking I'm going to use uh, some large heat shrink tubing that I've got, I'll use some capped on tape and maybe just ordinary electrical insulation tape as well. So I want to keep that bundle of strips fairly tightly bound together. So next step, let's figure out a way of joining this onto the, the fixed arm. So this is the stub that I need to be able to connect one end of that uh, secondary winding to. And this is going to be fixed, it doesn't move at all. So I'm going to have to design a sort of a strap that comes up from here, does a 90 degree twist and joins onto the end of that secondary. So the other connection, the one you can't see, is up under here. And that's the one that we're going to use the flexible cable to connect to. So I'm not too worried about that one, but this is the one that's going to, have to be engineered. Now the transformer, when it's in place, is sitting there. So I don't have a lot of room to work with, and if I can just sort of put one of these strips through. If you were designing this from scratch, you know, it'd be a lot, a lot easier for you to design something that's a little bit more elegant. Because I'm doing a retrofit here, I'm, you know, having to think on my feet. But somehow I've got to join this end, this free end, to that. And it's going to need a, a 90 degree twist of some sort. So what I'm going to do is I'll make up a prototype just out of a single piece of copper. And I'll try and get the dimensions right and we'll work it from there. 
Okay, well, it's a couple of days later and I've had time to think this through. And uh, what I need to be able to do is to connect the, the copper Porsche, if you like to call it that, or the new secondary, to this stud here on the end of the, this arm. And just because of the misalignment, I made up a sort of a pretty rough sort of fabrication or a, a mock-up, if you like, of how I thought that might work. And you can see that with that bolted on there, then the free end of the secondary could bolt onto that. But I would have to make this out of five thicknesses of that same copper strip, and I just didn't like the idea of trying to bend that and hold it all. It's going to look out ugly. So having thought it through, I made up this fabrication here. So this is made of two millimeter thick copper strip doubled up at two points and then the whole arrangement has been riveted together and then silver soldered so that makes like a solid uh, fixture that uh, will transmit the current from the end of the secondary down to that fixed arm so it's just going to bolt in place like so and then the secondary is going to bolt onto that so I like that that's a, a slightly more elegant solution and I did the calculations on the cross-sectional area of this and it exceeds what I need so that should be fine. So I'm going to go ahead and do all the insulation on the secondary now, uh, put it inside the transformer laminations and we'll do a, a mock-up and see how it's going to fit. I've just been round and just rounded these edges off slightly just so that they're not going to cut any of the insulation that I put over this. So I'm going to start with uh, capped on tape which is a, like a heat resistant or heat proof tape. <coughs> I'll follow up with uh, ordinary insulation tape, electrical insulation tape, just to bind all that up, up and make a soft edge on it. And I've got some of this large diameter heat shrink uh, which I'll use to finally cover the whole lot. So the challenge is going to be to get this stuff on without wrinkling it too much. and of course finding the end of the tape. Okay, well it's got the capped on, on there and looks a bit messy around there but it was never going to be easy to get that to conform to that curve so I'm, you may have noticed I use narrower strips going around that end. Okay, so we're going to back up now with just ordinary electrical insulation tape. Okay, now I was considering doing a second layer of that, but uh, you know what, I think that's going to be enough. The thing is I can monitor this uh, fairly easily, it's just not hard to take a peek inside and have a look, see how it's going, if there's a problem, I can pull it out fairly readily and either replace or add to the insulation. I did have in mind trying to encase this whole arrangement in some sort of uh, epoxy resin. But um, let's see how this goes. So what we can do now is put our heat shrink on. Alrighty, success. So, what we need to do now is get this through the, the laminations and get that chocked in with some of this multi-panel. So I'm going to cut some of this 
to, to fit. And we'll get all that jammed in there. And let's power it up and see what happens. Well, we're ready to fit the new secondary to the transformer. So what I've done is I've cut this material. This is uh, multi-panel. Now, if you were doing this yourself and you couldn't get this material, you could use balsa wood, you could use soft wood, or some sort of um, fire-resistant or heat-resistant plastic if you can get hold of it. I'm thinking the balsa wood would be perfectly suitable. So I've cut two pieces to fit directly on top of the primary coil and I've lost one on the floor. So they'll just simply provide protection between the secondary and the primary. So the, the new secondary can go in there now. And I've made up some pieces to jam in either side. So these ones with the curves are going to go on the inside. And these rectangular ones are going to go on the outside. I've sized these so that they're fairly snug and I'm hoping that this is going to quieten this machine down too. It's just not going to rattle around quite so much. Okay, so that's ready to go in now. And what I've had to do is to um, fix these flexible cables, and although they're not very flexible, um, that's about the best I'm going to get with this. So remember, this is number two brown and sharp battery cable. Um, I put lugs on both ends. On my welder, the, the two lugs are actually fitted directly to the copper arm with a socket head uh, screw, and uh, I put the battery lugs uh, back to back so that I can get them both in that fairly tight space. So when this is mounted in the spot welder, it pivots on that axis there and I've got to somehow get these two cables and connect those to the uh, end of or this end of the, the secondary. So that's going to be a bit of a struggle so just bear with me I'm going to do all of this. It's going to be a lot of messing around so I probably won't do it on camera but uh, let's get the transformer in place and we'll come back and we'll see it fire. Well after a lot of messing around I did get the new secondary in place in the transformer, everything's bolted down, everything's tightened up and I've given it a test run and you would not believe the increase in the performance. That's because there is none. Yep, that's right. After all of that work, about the only thing that I can say is that it runs a lot quieter. The weld quality looks exactly the same to me. I cannot measure any increase in amperage. Um, I'm still not convinced that this thing is accurate, but um, what can I do? Incidentally, um, I ordered this on Amazon.com.au and that .au part should tell you that this is coming from a warehouse in Australia. That's what you'd expect and that's what Amazon apparently is trying to do in Australia is open up this massive warehouse and undercut all our local suppliers. As it turned out, it came from China and it took nearly four weeks to get here. So come on Amazon, lift your game, that's not good enough. But uh, having said that, I've tried measuring the current at the primary and for whatever reason it looks lower than what it was when I had the old secondary coil, the battery cable, wound through with two turns. So I don't know what's going on. Um, if anybody out there is an electrical guru, uh, feel free to leave a comment and tell me what I'm doing wrong. Maybe um, having one complete turn is better than half a turn, but having said that, uh, I keep thinking back to the uh, spot welder that I was copying from, which had exactly the same arrangement that I have here now. Anyway, uh, let's, I'll just show you what a difference it makes in terms of the, how quiet it is. So this is a two and a half second weld. And 
This is what it sounded like before. So as you can see, there's a big difference in the, the uh, how quiet it is anyway. I don't know that the welds are physically any stronger. Um, they, Like I say, they look exactly the same to me. These are some of the welds that I've just done with the new setup. And these are the welds that I did before I made the upgrade. So like I say, they, to me, they look exactly the same. Anyway, um, it was an interesting exercise. I guess that if I just improved the durability of this, and I, I, the one thing I have noticed is that this doesn't get anywhere near as hot as the old arrangement that I had, but that could be because I've downgraded the performance. Uh, and like I say, it's quieter. So is that a benefit? I don't know. So it's just one of those projects that um, interesting, had a lot of challenges in it, but at the end of the day, did I get a big benefit from it? Not really. So with that in mind, I'm going to sign off for now. So thanks for watching.